Welcome to Photo Escapes, a photography series featuring Matthew William Zellis. I literally can't stop grinning. This is this is so good. And myself, John Alexander. This is the place that I've been really excited about coming to. We take you along on our journey, photographing some of the most amazing locations in the world. In this episode, we visit Skomer Island. Renting out the biggest lenses we can find, we make our way over to Skoma in late April to photograph the thousands of puffins at the beginning of their breeding season. However, spring in the British Isles had other ideas. We're actually meant to be on the ferry right now. Unfortunately, Storm Hannah has arrived just as we're supposed to be heading across there. 80 mile an hour gusts have been recorded, five meter waves, so there is no way that the boat was gonna run. No. So we're delayed till at least tomorrow. So what we're going to go and do now is drive around the coastline and see if we can find anything we can photograph in this hideous weather. I don't know if we're going to be there able is to all, do it. There is always something to photograph, but this is going to be a serious challenge. It's going to be fun. Unlike the guillemots nesting on the stack in front of us, our equipment wasn't built to endure driving rain and 80 mile per hour gusts, so we bravely ran away, back to our accommodation to ensure our cameras were usable for the rest of our trip. The next morning, still soggy from the previous night, we drive back to the Pembrokeshire coastline, determined to make the most of our time here. Eventually, we spotted a potential location. We found this amazing bay on the Pembrokeshire coastline. We've got 60 mile an hour winds, we're in a little bit of an eddy here, so it's actually quite nice. Um, but I've got some amazing gorse in the foreground here. And instead of using fast shutter speeds to capture the action and these big waves rolling in, I thought I'd slow it down, get my tripod out and actually extend my shutter speed to about a second, two seconds. And that means the gorse in the foreground gives a really nice blurry motion blur. And I think that's going to look really good and get that, that energy for the photograph. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's the most beautiful day, but it is blowing an absolute gale. Storm Hannah has ruined our chances of getting to Skoma, but this is epic. I think I'm doing something different to John, who's focusing on slower shutter speeds, and I just love the energy that's in the ocean today and in the waves, so I'm going to use the faster shutter speed and maybe zoom in on some of the headlands off in the distance. Walking back from the cliffs, looking for ways to embrace Storm Hannah rather than fighting it, we spoke to a local who suggested that we go to the most exposed beach in the area. Broadhaven Beach to photograph the kite surfers. So good photographing straight into the sun, you get these really graphic silhouettes, it looks brilliant. This is such a good chance to kind of practice with these lenses that we've hired before we're actually on Skomer Island tomorrow, hopefully, if the ferry goes. So what I'm focusing on is trying to get 
one of these kite surfers in the air as they go past the headland. You've got the shape of the kite server, the shape of the island and the headland, and then these really great clouds above. It's a great scene. Slightly further down the beach, I compose my shots. Okay, there's one upside of having a very, very windy day. Uh, is that we found these kite surfers just off the shore here and having really good fun with our massive lenses trying to get some action shots. Trying to get this kite surfer as he's going past me using a very slow shutter speed. It's quite hard to get a really smooth pan. Hopefully I've got a good one, I can't really tell. This is great fun though. This is something that we wouldn't really usually do, so it's quite fun to do something a bit different. That was so good, that was really good fun. As we walk off the beach in slow motion, we get the call to say the ferry to Skoma will be running the next morning. So we return to our accommodation to prepare for two nights on Skoma Island without electricity. The next morning, the wind had died down and we made our way to Skoma Island, just a stone's throw away from the mainland. They're literally just strapping bags to the tractors. It's very efficient. Having beaten our bags to the accommodation, we fought over the top bunk, nestled our feet into the complementary crocs, and got out the map of Skoma. Okay, so we're finally on Skoma Island, which is really exciting and a bit of a relief. Uh, we're just trying to decide what to do with our first day here. We've checked in, and I think we're going to head to the north of the island. I think then we've got a circular walk around the whole island. So then we're going to go from the north, we're going to walk down to the west side. And this is where we're really interested in, the wick. I think, I think that's where you have the most amount of puffins. So there, I think we're going to go there a bit later when everyone else has, has gone. Yeah, once all the tourists have all left. And there hopefully won't be too many people, yeah. um, which will give us a bit more space and time to yeah. actually get some shots of some puffins. Walking through the dedicated routes past the thousands of burrows, we realised the importance of Skoma to ground nesting birds like the puffin. Thanks to the careful management of the island by the Wildlife Trust of South and West Wales, it is completely rat free. Without the presence of any ground predators, many species of birds choose to nest here. So we're at the Wick now. This is the place that I've been really excited about coming to. This is where the biggest concentration of puffins are. And we are not disappointed. There are hundreds of puffins here. And some of them are so close that you can use your wide angle to actually photograph them. And we haven't just got the puffins, we've got an absolutely amazing backdrop as well. From April until August, Skoma is home to 6,000 pairs of Atlantic puffins, who return here each year to breed in burrows on these dramatic cliffs. We are here in late April, so while one puffin is fishing, the other is preparing the nest or perhaps already incubating its egg. Due to the lack of ground predators here, puffins are unfazed by humans, which pleases us both as photographers. This is absolutely incredible. 
I've seen the photos of them, but there is nothing like actually seeing them in real life. It's so awesome. Watching them fly in at like 80 kilometers an hour and then just land in their burrows. It's amazing. This is the best day ever. This is so good. The rabbits just come join the party. This is almost too easy. It feels like cheating because they're so close. I've hired this ridiculous massive lens and I'm actually thinking of having to change to like put a 35 millimeter on so they're just like waddling across the path. Oh, I just heard them kissing. <laughs> um, there's one just poking its head up out of the burrow here. I literally can't stop grinning. This is, this is so good. Oh. So you can stay as still as you want and they just come and fly right next to you. It's actually too close right now for me to take a photograph. So I'm just gonna stay quite still and watch it. It's tilting its head at me. We were just talking to a proper birder down here who said this is still a little bit early in the season. I mean, there's loads here, but apparently within a few days or a week, this whole area will be covered with thousands and thousands of puffins. Even this is great though. All the day trippers have now gone, and I think there's only 14 of us on this whole island, and for some reason we're the only ones here at the best time. And this is just brilliant. I think they're my favourite bird now. From what was your favourite bird before? I didn't have one, you know. <laughs> what was my favourite bird before? Did I have a favourite bird? A chicken. A roast chicken. <laughs> a roast chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we then got evidence it was the breeding season. He's just climbed on top of her shoulders. <laughs> this is actually quite a cool photograph. This is a really cool photo. Really good. It's quite intense, I've got like 500 millimetre zoom. Apparently not content with the mating puffins and the breathtaking scenery, Matt decided to start a bit of friendly-ish competition. First person to get a puffin in flight in focus yes. that is not like miles off gets okay. cooked for by the other person. So a good photo that the other person also At thinks is good. respectable and the, the other person has to put the lasagna in the oven. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. It's a challenge accepted. I'm gonna have to... <laughs> yep, blur, 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 blur. Not in the frame, not in the frame, blur. Good, good. <laughs> no way. Yes. So you've got to put, you've got to put the ready-made lasagna in the oven. You're Look at that. Some... Look, that's, that's your... That's oh. actually really good. You just went like that and it focused. I'm just that good. You are just amazing. I've got the reactions of a ninja. That was the only way that this experience could get any better, is beating John. It looks like they should have arms. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling for anything else useful to say, we walked through the fog that had now enveloped the island to get back for a well-earned rest after a fantastic first day here on the island. Wanting to know more about the island, we chat to Sarah, who works on Skoma Island, about one of their Manx Shearwater conservation initiatives. A lot of people don't know about Skoma, as it's home to about 50% of the world's population of Manx Shearwaters, and they all come to breed on Skoma Island. They're not something that people will see very often because they come out at night, but the island is absolutely full of Manx Shearwaters. It's very important for us uh, to do a, a certain amount of monitoring of the shearwaters and it is difficult in natural burrows because 
it's difficult to access the chicks in the burrows. It is um, important to weigh the chicks to know how well they're doing. Um, the weight of the chick is, is crucial to knowing if the bird's going to survive into adulthood. So um, these boxes allow us to actually open up when they're in the ground and see the chick in there and do any monitoring or weighing, whatever we have to do on the bird. Um, so once they're in the ground, to the bird, to the Manxia water, it's, it's all intents and purposes just like a natural burrow. Um, the, the adult won't be there by day because the adults will be out feeding so you've only got the chick in the burrow so you're not going to worry the adult birds. It's only the very start so hopefully in years to come you know there will be birds in these boxes. As we head out, with the absence of any ferries running due to it being Monday, we know we'll have the whole island to ourselves. We head down to North Haven, weirdly on the east side of the island, where the ferry dropped us the day before. Here in North Haven, I mean, have a look at that scenery, it's absolutely epic. You haven't just got the cliffs like going off in the distance, but you've got bluebells in the foreground and puffins relatively close to where I am, and also the puffins coming up from the sea. So it's, the whole combination is just awesome. Uh, I'm pretty hungry, we should have had lunch about an hour and a half ago, but we're so excited about just being here that we just like, we don't care about that, have some fruit pastels and we'll just keep going. So we love it here. You need so much patience doing wildlife photography. The scene is constantly changing. It's like being in a real world David Attenborough documentary. One moment you've got seagulls fighting, then you've got two puffins mating. They're landing, they're taking off. So it's trying to almost learn what they're doing and see the repetitive behavior in order that you can be ahead of the game and know what they're about to do so you can get ready to get the shot. Initially, I was slightly further down the path there, but the foreground wasn't that exciting. It was just like dead grass, but I've come slightly further up the hill and we've got some really nice bluebells here in the foreground. You can make the foreground really, really blur, some purple blur, and then you obviously got the, the puffins and then the cliffs in the background. So that looks really good. Ah, my knees. You're actually not allowed off these, um, these pathways here because there are burrows everywhere. Um, whether it's puffin burrows or rabbit burrows, which is great for conservation, but extremely hard for photographers because obviously you want to kind of get to the perfect location to, to get your shot. Um, but you know, it is for conservation and you know, you just have to work with what you've got. No, autofocus didn't like that and I've got a full memory card. Should we go for lunch? <coughs> After lunch, slash dinner, we notice a small hide on the edge of a pond, so we climb inside. We've just come into one of the hides as a bit of a break from the cold outside and it's great. We've got loads of gulls flying, they're washing in the pond straight in front of us. And there's even a tiny little rabbit just down here, probably two metres away. It's awesome. So I'm trying to capture them in flight as they're just about to land and then we're also trying some slow shutter speeds. That's not going very well though.
I'm taking lots of different types of shutter speeds. Most of it is just really slow shutter speeds, like 10th of a second, 15th of a second. And the percentage is extremely small that I'll get it in focus. But actually some of them look quite nice as a sort of an abstract blur. Um, that's partly on purpose and partly because I can't, <laughs> I can't focus on it properly at a 10th of a second. Because in a 10th of a second, the, the camera goes black when the mirror shuts and actually you can't see and can't follow your subject. But I think I might have some quite cool shots. While we were in the hide, a guest staying here with us told us that there was a place with white flowers covering the whole side of a cliff. This was our final chance to photograph the puffins before we leave. So we followed his directions to this new location as light dimmed towards sunset. What an absolutely perfect place this is. We thought we found the ultimate puffin spot, but actually here on our last night, I think we found the best spot. one just poked its head out here. This is gonna have to be the last shot of the day as we are almost out of light, but I think it might be one of my favorites. There are lots of puffins sat on top of this rock which are perfectly silhouetted against the sky. This is brilliant. The next morning, we packed our bags to leave the island. We look back on this adventure as one of our favourite photo escapes experiences yet. Being detached from reality for two days and waiting for the ferry only added to the anticipation of seeing the puffins and really made us feel like we earned our moments with them.